Hey Eagle Run 2-3, welcome to the new workbench over here. Still a work in progress, but we are slowly moving in. We got a package in the mail. I want to show it to you. We got some prized possessions in here. That's right, primers. Check them out. CCI small pistol number 500. Else did they order here? Did I order something else? I don't even remember. Oh yeah, that's right. We got a uh, another case gauge. So this is a Wilson. Nice little box. It's kind of cool. Oh, you guys are getting a little bit of a preview here. I forgot what this was. This is a six-five Creedmoor. Case gauge because 65 Creedmoor is coming soon. L. E. Wilson Creedmoor. You know, it, it does only say Creedmoor on there. And I happen to know. Okay, so there it does say 65 Creedmoor on there. So I'm I, I'm not ever gonna be confused by the six Creedmoor and the six five Creedmoor, because I don't own six Creedmoor, but that could be potentially confusing. So, accurate and uniform hand loads. All right, we'll take a look at that. So far, I've been saving all this, all these manuals. I'm gonna have a whole binder full of that kind of stuff. Case gauges, do you save them in the box? I, mean, I got all these questions. I just don't know what to do with this stuff. I guess we'll, I've got a spot in the cabinet. In fact, I'm gonna, um, I'll go through the cabinets and I'll show you how I have them set up. And I'd love for, you know, some feedback on that. Uh, let me know what you think kind of from a workflow perspective. Okay, so let's see if we've got some prices on here. The case gauge for 6.5 was $29. And then look at that, 75 bucks a piece. So 150. And then I did have a promo code and got those for 15 bucks. So, or 50, I got a $15 discount, I guess what that would be. Uh, it does not look like, oh, there is $19 hazmat fee, $19.95. Okay, so how does, uh, how does CCI package these? Looks like pretty similar to Remington. You just gotta, when you slide them out, you gotta make sure they're going the right direction. Cause I dumped a bunch, there they are. Dumped a bunch of them on my workbench the other day. In fact, one is missing. Look at that, they're all going the right direction. Is uh, is that normal? If I had a flip tray, I would have no work to do. Are they usually always all going the same direction? I don't know. So far, it seems like most of them are. Okay, so we have what we need to do nine millimeter, and I feel like I've been saying that for a week, and then we shut everything down and started working on this workbench. Um, so, uh, in the next video, we're going to be bolting down the, uh, the Dillon press and we should be, man, we should be super close to just churning out some rounds and I'm sure I'm going to have lots of questions. I've learned so much so far, um, in this journey and I know I have a long ways to go. I also kind of need to think about where I'm going to put this. Uh, I think I'm going to probably, it was mounted right here. You can see the, the bolt, the holes uh, in the bench. I could easily put it back right here, but I'm kind of thinking that I should go down a little bit. Maybe, maybe where I have more space to my left. Although I am right-handed, I don't know. I feel like I have some space, but it's also very cramped over here. Um, it's a 48 inch worktop, which I know some of you have triple that, and I know some of you have half that, so. This is what I have to work with here. Let me back you up here and I'll show you what I have up here and how my uh, my cabinets are laid out. So the lighting is definitely not gonna be great, but here's what we have so far. We have our scale, planning on putting manuals there, and then I have my extra dies up there. I guess that's where the old case gauge should go. And then, and then up top, I've got stored my, uh, my my scale uh, box. 
And this one here, this one here, I have the powder measure and eventually we'll have multiple power powder measures because we will be, um, we'll have those set up for different ones. And I was looking at some tool head storage and I think this one is, there's plenty of room for it to stand up up there. And so I could have maybe two or three of them up there plus one on the machine. Also, this is the most fragile part of the machine. So if I'm not reloading, uh, just kind of throwing a cover over the machine, taking the tool head off and putting it up here. This is where, of course, all the valuable pieces are. So being able to store it up here looks pretty good. And then over here in this one, uh, I've got some random gun parts. This is kind of going to be more gun storage stuff. I think the next two containers will probably have gun storage. And then um, I have enough room there for all of my powder. Um, got a couple jugs up there so far. Uh, this is, we've mostly been working with CFE. That's what we'll be running because that's what I have the most of. But eventually I'll be playing with that long shot as well. And then going down one, we are empty here and empty here. So I imagine these two will do shelves and have some gun part storage, uh, things like that. And then as we get down a little bit more, we have uh, chemicals and such, cleaning supplies, and then we have paint. Uh, that's more stains and varnishes. And then these two both have uh, spray paint. So all of that paint from those shelves all made it up here. So if you have any ideas for me on that, let me know. It'll probably just take some trial and error to figure out what my workflow is going to be. Easy and enjoyable to work. I'm also playing with some magnetic ideas on making those close. Uh, the keys are kind of annoying. If you look, I've got two, four, six, eight, nine sets of keys up there. And essentially you have two, four, you have six for each, each bay, uh, cause one key will open three doors, but uh, I'd like to put a knob up there or something, I think. All right. You'll run two, three. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.